You all have a handout in front of you. You will not be asked to turn that in, so I just want to give you that disclaimer. Nobody's going to look at it. I answer yourself honestly, and we'll get to that part in a little bit. What I want to talk to you about right now is our revving up reverse survey, and this is your collective responses, and this is what we built our program on today and tomorrow. This was interesting. 96% of, of y'all, I'm getting acclimated to Texas, stated that you want to increase your business production by two to five or more loans every month. So that's over and above what you had been doing, right? 96% of you. The definition of insanity, by the way, is doing the same things over and over and over and expecting different results. So what we're going to talk about in this session is how can We'll set the table for what y'all want. We'll talk a little bit about how you can make more time in your day and what you need as individuals to get there. So let's first re review the survey. So this is the way it broke down. Only one, uh, two people said they wanted to do m one more loan, but think about it, that's double what they were doing. Yay, that's encouragement. Two more was 19 of you, three more, 14, more than three, 18, and nobody said they don't want to do any more business. So what that tells me is that the want is there. You need to know what ponds to fish in and how many people need to make some more time in their day to get there. Right, Mr. Everywhere. So when, when I asked about where you want to fish, what you want more information on, this was a response. Financial planners, 58.5%. Tomorrow, in our last session, we'll be talking about Monte Carlo simulations and how to marry a reverse mortgage to retirement strategy tools. We've got two pretty amazing financial planners coupled with Dan, who was probably one of the industry's leading reverse mortgage specialists as it relates to marrying the two products. And um, I think that you'll really enjoy that. So by the way, CPAs and financial planners is very similar in your approach. Obviously, wealth under management is your CFPs, but those that may not be able to afford a CPA or a CFP, Wealth advisor, probably have a CPA, right? I need more acronyms. <laughs> Realtors, builders, uh, that was pretty big too, 38% or not 38 of you said you wanted to do more business with realtors and builders. We have Sue Havlin, who we'll talk a little bit more in a minute. Uh, she's an expert in Heckam for Purchase Business and she will be presenting tomorrow on how to build that section to put another, excuse me, to put another leg under your stool as it relates to realtors. Builders, we'll be rolling that out a little bit later. We recognize there is humongous opportunity out there. Can I say that, humongous? Opportunity out there to connect with builders who are focused on 55 plus communities, okay? One of the objections is that we can't start the loan until we get the certificate of occupancy. You'll hear more about that. We have a way to help you with it. And again, another plug for our ops team, see Sharon Langley and Faith, uh, if you want a little bit more information on that. Aging in place, attorneys, networking, and personal events to create leads, those ranked a little bit lower. We will present to you on these topics, but not at this summit. We took the top ones. So let's talk a little bit about how you're going to make some time in your day or what you need to move yourself to the next level. It's not enough to want to, right? We can want to all day long, but that doesn't make it happen. We have to take action and we have to hold ourselves accountable. There's things we need to do to get there. 
So if I could steal part of, of Scott's video, any road will get you there if you don't know where you're going. We need to be on purpose. So you have a, a worksheet in front of you. Let's take five minutes. And like I said, you don't have to turn this in. So don't answer the way you think you need to answer for me. Answer honestly to yourself. Review and pick only two or three of the top box. Pick two or three that you need or want to be more proficient in. After we complete that exercise, we're going to do a roundtable discussion because those of you who have already gotten success in that sector can share with us what you did. We can capture all of that up here on our, our trusty, look at this, look what Dan did. They're perfect. They are perfect. So we'll be capturing and we'll share with you behind the summit what our results were. So take five minutes, answer yourself honestly, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so who feels like they're an expert in time management? Where are our subject matter experts and who's brave enough to share with the group how you manage your time? I know we've got some. Yeah, well, I'm working on social media all day, basically, but I focus on at night when I go to bed, I have my computer in front of me, and that's when I do all my LinkedIn, and I have, I have a loud mouth, loud voice. We like your voice, though. Oh, you're just kidding. <laughs> so I do schedule time every night um, to focus on my LinkedIn, Facebook. I take a look at what Claudia's team has been doing for me, and then sometimes I'll forward it to certain individuals or networking partners or loan managers, and I'll forward something to them from LinkedIn, or I'll send them a message on LinkedIn. Hey, how's it going? Just to remind them that I'm still here. Don't forget me. Nice. And so we have our blue person over here writing it perfectly on the wall. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. What about written goals with timelines? Does anybody do that? Does anybody think they should? Carlos, was that a hand raise? You yeah, do. I'm sorry? Excellent. You want to share us share with us why? I think goal planning is uh, absolutely necessary for our business. You already shared Steve uh, Scott's comment about if you don't know where you're going, any road will work. Uh, you need to have a plan and idea for how to go about targeting your goals. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, you, you're just going to be aimless. Like you said, the definition of insanity is doing something different, uh, expecting different results, but doing the same thing. Uh, I, I, our, our team, we set a quarterly goal, uh, we break our yearly goals broken up into quarterly goals and then monthly goals and we're trying to make sure that we adhere to uh, time frames for what we're trying to close on a regular basis. So awesome. we have weekly calls with Mickey uh, for all of our pipeline and then we're just tracking to make sure that we're processing everything in a timely fashion. So Carlos, let me ask you, was there ever a time when you didn't use goals and timelines? Uh, yeah, um, probably about 15 years ago, I went through an Anthony Robbins uh, seminar and he talked about the importance of uh, goal setting. Uh, and that year I hit 82% of my one year goals and I've kind of been a fan of it ever since. And what was it before? Before I ever did that? Before you went to Anthony Robbins? Never really monitored or tracked it, so I just enjoyed life and I was happy at that point in my life. Happy, but did you make the money that you wanted to? Oh, I was in the Air Force and then college, so I wasn't really working. <laughs> Whole different mindset. That's yep. awesome. Thank you. That deserves a Starbucks card. Does anybody have an accountability partner? Anybody ever use an accountability partner?
Guess who that is? <laughs> Rick. So I've got an accountability group. It's uh, a, real, a real estate person and a forward person. And we meet weekly for one hour exactly. And um, time management. Talk, urge, support, and berate whatever is needed. <laughs> How does that help your business? How does that help you in your day-to-day -day activities? Well, you know, there's that sense of, I don't want to be embarrassed if I promised I was going to do something the week before. Mm -hmm. So like with homework, you know, I'll be up at 11 o'clock at night before writing the thing or doing the task. So there's that, but it's also nice just to have face-to-face -face with somebody who's similar, but not yet, not a competitor. So it's, it's both um, touchy-feely and practical. Perfect. You know, I think that might deserve another Starbucks card. You should hate your Starbucks person. This is good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So who wants to increase not only their income, but who wants to increase their fun factor while they do it? Are y'all having so much fun you can't stand it already? <laughs> yeah, fun factor and make more money. Anybody? Sure. Chris. <laughs> and Chris is the Energizer Bunny. You know, right now I'm trying to get a little bit more lightheaded about it. You know, and 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 you know, I'm pretty God driven in this. So I guess for me, it's like, okay, it's gonna work out one way or another, and that's the mindset that I've really started taking into play. You know, and if I get into binds with files, or if I get into binds with realtors, or you know, or presentations, whatever the case may be going on, if it's not going in my direction, I guess I'm really trying to get down to where it's going to work out one way or another. You know, and what's nice is there's lots of people that I know in here that, you know, call up, help, you know, and figure this out or Cynthia. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's so, you know, just getting into that mindset of it's going to work out one way or another, you know, kind of helps making the fun factor come out on top of that. You know? so. Very good points. Thank you, Chris. Jason? Yeah. Um uh, for everybody who doesn't know, I've got three little kids, so my time is kind of limited. I, I believe in the uh, work-life balance, but what I hello, um, what I like to do is I, I try to network with people that are like me, folks that like to go out and have fun and sometimes escape the uh, the craziness of the children. So, for example, on Monday, I'm from Philly. We're going. We have a networking event at Philly's home opener, and we're going to do some business. And we're going to drink a lot of beer. <laughs> Yellow. We're going to follow. Like that's how I feel. You you build relationships, and it becomes not so much business. It becomes personal. They like you. They refer you deals, and vice versa. And that's how you're bringing kind of some fun into the business. So, and that's a good point too, Jason. Let me ask you another question. Why did you choose people that are like-minded? Because I like working with people like myself. And that drives more business to Jason. So I have to brag on Jason for a second. You've been with us, what, 30, 45 days, maybe? Yeah. Maybe he's already closed his first loan? No, not yet. Oh, it's closed. Okay, I'll, I'll be honest. Not yet. We got one in, it's going gonna, it's gonna to close real soon. So, trying. Congratulations. <laughs> it's not easy changing companies, and we understand that, but Jason obviously has some things figured out, and I appreciate you sharing with the group. Um, you guys aren't out there alone. We're here to support you. Yeah. Please. That's fun. Yeah, it's boring company, which I 
the new environmental study smokestacks for Eldar, which is leak detection and repair in, in uh, refineries. <laughs> But he's grown his business all through relationship stuff. He takes a motor home and a barbecue pit to Formula One. He has box seats at the Cowboys Stadium. It's, it's all about creating personal relationships with people and sharing experiences with people. And he makes a ton of money. While so he's that, having that strategy fun. of connecting is really valuable. I'd give you a Starbucks card, but I'm not. <laughs> That's why you don't get it. <laughs> Whoops. So if you're not having fun while you're making money, you better figure out how to put some fun in it because isn't that what it's all about? And that's part of your life balance, right? And when you have fun at it, you want to do more of it. And it's this synergy that's built. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Catalina? doing it a long time. Um, I, my goal this year was to network with more loan officers in the industry, not with you all, but for for, with forward people. And my other goal was also to do presentations face to face with seniors. And um, I got invited by the city of Anaheim, which was huge, to do a presentation for their seniors. They had not done one in five years and they allowed me to go in and i did and it was awesome because that generated business i didn't have to put more than a hundred bucks just to feed these seniors costco sandwiches and and they were just happy that i was answering all their questions and and i was there face to face and they felt that hey this this girl explained everything to us and she does care so i'm going to talk to her at the end of the session i had Five people waiting for me. Talk to me about reverses. Now, that was one time that I spent at the senior center. And now they want me again at another location. So with that said, now that I got that done with this with Aunt City of Anaheim, she is going to go ahead and say, hey, how about go to Cyprus, the city's the city um, of Cyprus Senior Center? And because they know I already got approved here. They're willing to vouch for me that I am honest, integrity, and I'm definitely there for, for the seniors. And you're so passionate. That is my goal. That is my goal this year is to get do more press. Awesome. You get Scott's Starbucks card. This is why. <laughs> Okay, and then, um, Dan, how are we doing on time, or somebody? 308, okay, thank you. So why did I put discover my niche within the niche in reverse? Can somebody answer that? I'm sorry? Okay, and can you, I can't hear Cynthia. since January, kind of the way the, uh, the uh, holidays fell and everything. And so I still, I find myself scattered, you know, is it financial planners, it, you know, is it real estate, it, you know, is it networking groups? And I kind of feel like I'm dabbing a, in a little of all three, but, but not really a, a focused niche. Um, and I'll give you a challenge, like I'm beginning to think that like you're just general networking groups are probably useless and someone can tell me how they get a, around this and you guys will probably laugh at this so you go to a networking group and they say I'm a dentist I'm a lawyer I'm a photographer they and they only give you 15 30 seconds or a minute to say what you're looking for 
but it's impossible <laughs> to explain what you do in a 15 to 30 second blur. So then they tell you, well, then go do individual meetups. Well, then that leads to a time management issue. <laughs> so anyway, those are all of the things. But I, but I still marked, uh, if I could nail down the niche, then I think I would be more focused on my goals and time management. So that's just from a rookie's standpoint. I'm in Georgetown. Uh, it's about uh, 30 miles north of here. Yay, hey, Todd. And I have the best team. I have the greatest support in Joe. Well, you've got the Energizer Bunny, I'm just saying. And Joe. So I've been in the reverse space for over 16 years, and I've had the pleasure of coaching and working with probably hundreds of loan officers. And I can tell you, Todd, what you're going through right now is something that almost everybody has. And that's trying to be all things to all people and trying to find your space. If you try to do too much, you won't accomplish anything. So who understands the concept of having like three, four at the most opportunities inside your plan? Who does that? Maybe it's financial planner. Maybe it's... Um, Realtor, maybe it's social media because let's face it, that works for you 24 seven. And maybe one other thing. The reason you might wanna do that folks is because you have to position yourselves as a subject matter expert. Sue, so how important is it to be the go-to person? Absolutely. So Todd, what you're going through is something that we've all been through. Maybe some still are. I don't, I, I don't know. But we have a sales support team that's going to help you all figure that out, right? But if you don't figure out where your fun factor is, because when you marry your skill sets with the opportunity that's out there in the marketplace, you're going to make money. You're going to have fun. It won't feel like work. It's a win for everybody but you've got to figure out what those two or three or maybe that fourth thing is. So I want to invite anonymously, if you want to add to these lists, please do so. Catalina? going to be seniors there that's where you network you go to those those events and then you make contacts with those CPAs Cynthia your card, tell them what's all you know tell them what you're about and then that's where you reach okay and let me remind you that we're recording so we need everybody to speak up and that was that was a good point Catalina yes not, not to be negative or not to take this in a negative way <clears throat> my point in my career in reverse mortgage is, is to find a niche for me. I've done seminars, I've and been successful, I've done mailers, I've done, you name the trend over the last 20 years, I've tried it. And there are so many people in the business uh, that market seminars or free lunches or those kinds of things. I'm just trying to find something that will work for me because I love the business. I wish I had another Starbucks card. You deserve <laughs> Thank you. Great, great comment. So to that point, um, let me move on just a little bit. We're running out of time. Please. I'm a big believer in not necessarily limiting yourself to what group you may want to try and do a presentation for. Because of the nature of our business and the general continued lack of understanding of what it is we do and what we can do for people, you should speak to any group that you can get in front of. I don't care what the group is because the people in the group either will be interested in using the reverse mortgage 
or they have parents or grandparents or friends or neighbors. I've always wanted to get in front of a large group of roofers. Now, not that the roofers need a reverse mortgage, but I wondered how many times they've gone out on a call from a senior who has a leaky roof with buckets setting around. And when the roofer tells them how much it's going to cost to fix that roof, and the poor senior just shrugs their shoulders and say, I can't do that. They don't have the resources. If the roofer had been at your presentation and they said to this senior, you know, there may be a way that you can take care of this that you're not aware of. And let me put you in contact with somebody who might help you. And I just want to end with uh, a story. A long, long time ago, <laughs> I may get emotional about this, so forgive me. Um, in 2000, when we were still a new industry, we'd been around about 10 years, I had a phone call from a woman. And she said to me, someone told me you might be able to help me with my problems. Now, she had no idea what a reverse mortgage was about. She wasn't calling me about that. Somebody had said to her, call this man. I think he can help you. And I said, what's your problem? 1994, we had an earthquake in the San Fernando Valley. Her home up in the hills of Tahunga her home suffered some damage. She had to do some repairs. The city required her to. They red tagged her house and she couldn't live in it without doing the repairs. This woman took out a loan from a small business, one of the, the disaster loans that they were giving out, maybe $300 a month. Now, this was in 2000. This woman was 75 years old. She had $903 a month in income. Social Security. She had to pay $300 a month on this loan she took out so she could have a home she could live in. And by the time she got through paying for utilities, taxes, insurance, food, what she ended up doing was borrowing money on a credit card every month and using her credit card. By the time she called me, she was paying $250 a month minimum payment on the credit card because it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. While she's talking to me and I'm asking her questions, how old are you, what's your home worth, blah, 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 blah. I'm working out the numbers. And I said to her, have you ever heard about reverse mortgages? She said, no. She didn't have a clue about that. I proceeded to explain to her what it was all about. As you would explain to anybody brand new you started talking to. And I said, from what you've told me, it seems to me we ought to be able to do a reverse mortgage and help you out. We're going to be able to provide enough money to pay off your mortgage. You won't have payments to make anymore. And we're going to provide enough with money at the start of the loan to pay off your credit card. You won't have that payment anymore. And there'll be enough left over for you to have about $400 a month in income. I got a letter from this woman. About, I'm sorry. About uh, six weeks after it closed the loan, she said to me, thank you. I can now go to sleep at night without worrying about what tomorrow will bring. We change lives, and that's what it's all about. I'm sorry. Thank you, John. <laughs> so we do have passion for this product, definitely, and there's a good reason why. So back to the, back to the survey, um, one of the number one things that collectively everybody said is that you wanted a CRM. 
So we're in the final stages of negotiating for RCRM, um, but let me ask you a few questions. How important would it be to you to have a CRM that will sync up automatically like every 10, 15 minutes to reverse vision so that you could live in the CRM. You could assign tasks to yourself. It would sync with your calendar. You don't have to do duplicate entry into your CRM plus in reverse vision. You can get your updates inside of the CRM that are current and you could begin to put in who your prospect partners are, your business to business partners, how many leads they've given you, click a button and know which leads those were so that you can give a quick update, put your campaigns inside the CRM so that you can track your ROI. Any of that sound appealing to you? Who would use it? Does anybody have one that they use now? What is it? I'm sorry? Lead mailbox? Okay. Okay. Joe? Okay. Dennis? It is. But what if I told you that our IT team is so good that they could sync reverse vision to sales engine and you'd have up-to-date information and you'd only have to input your information in one place. Is that of value to you? I'm sorry? Come on up. How much would that, how much would you be willing to pay for that? What are you paying now, Dennis? Okay. What if I told you that we can negotiate that price down? It'll do more and probably end up cost to you around 40 bucks. You can download you can download everything inside of Sales Engine into a spreadsheet, close your account, you can upload it to your next company or, I'm sorry? We would have to shut that off, Catalina, and that's a good point, actually, I'm glad you brought it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody here ever felt like Open Mortgage has taken anything from them? I'm sorry? Good answer. Yes. Was that when Tori still was part of Sales Engine? Yeah. Right. And that is no more. Yeah. Okay, just curious. So we're headed down the path of the CRM. Could you just speak a little bit about exactly what kind of capabilities it would have? What typically would do? Would it generate letters for you, manage your contacts, things like that? I mean, that's what I'm interested in. So you can do HTML emails. You can create a workflow, which would do something like, let's say you call in a realtor, just to pick something, 
and you know for your business model that on day three you need to send them or immediately you want to send them a thank you for the appointment then in three days maybe you want to send another a, a marketing piece maybe maybe you want to send a story whatever it is you can say on day three do this on day seven do that it's all automated one time one time marketing collateral I'm happy to tell you that next week we will start a marketing team for reverse mortgage specific it will be our own Dennis Lucian yeah you Patty Dennis Lucian Greg Lax, Lou Filippo, Sue Havlin, and myself. We'll be reviewing what um, we have. We'll be reviewing what we need to marry to all of your business plans. We will write the content. We'll send it to Amy, who can make it look pretty and do her thing. And you will then have what you need. Um, is it going to be an overnight fix? No. But we have some real quality people that's going to be looking at it. We will also. Um, have random people join our call so that we're getting representation from all over the country. So that should take care of marketing collateral. Good? Yeah. SEO optimization is something that's really important to all of us. We are looking into it. Claudia just gave us a really good reason to make sure that we have it and we use it. Uh, just know that it's being worked on behind the scenes and we'll flip that out to you as soon as we can more leads go get them That's all I can say <laughs> make it happen <laughs> time management we talked about uh, some strategies for that by the way there's two books I recommend the first one is the checklist manifesto help you get organized and the other one is getting things done it will absolutely help you with organization and time management. Uh, develop relationships with professionals. That's what we're here talking about today and tomorrow. Um, we're creating pathways, which you'll learn more about a little bit later. But it will be soup to nuts. If, if this is where you decide your niche is, then we've created the pathway for you to get there. Okay. We have an awesome training department. We have an awesome business advisor, which you haven't met yet. I'm getting there. We have continuing education. Dan's weekly calls. Who's not a fan? I mean, really. <laughs> Anybody gotten an extra loan because of information you've heard from Dan? She's back there with her hand up. It happens. I've, I've heard quite a few, actually. Uh, faster turn times go see our ops department they have some information for you on fast track if you participate in fast track our turn times will get better immediately submit a clean file make sure it has all the documentation that we have in fast track by the way faith has a checklist on what those items are and with your application package going forward, it will print out for you that same list. So when you print the app package, here's what you need. Submit it. Mike. Is the fast pack different than the reverse LO checklist? Yes. It is. Okay. Yes. Good point. So. Hey, Sherry, we need a compliment while we're talking about that fast track. Sure. When I first came to open mortgage with equity purchases, and I worked with Joe and Sharon specifically, and uh, we just closed last week two purchase transactions in 30 days. And that's the goal that I had set for everyone uh, because that's what I had obtained before. And Sharon, she sometimes doesn't like my calls, but Sharon, <laughs> Sharon and Faith go out of their way to actually. You know, work on and improving that department, especially for the purchase reverse. If you're not focusing on that, you need to. Uh, but you know, I just have had you know, Faith take some calls and personally take uh, you know, instead of having one of her closers, she'll do it for me on a rush. And uh, I just like the extra personal service of being able to dial up and be able to call my the 
department heads directly. Uh, it, it, you know, I worked for Wells Fargo, I worked for Security One, I worked for a bunch of different companies, and that wasn't always the open door policy. Whereas here with Open Mortgage, at least they were open to my feedback in the very beginning. Um, because we, we suck uh, at doing purchase transactions. I almost left the company because my first three transactions were all purchases and we didn't come close to a close of escrow date. And that's night and day difference now. Hats off to our ops team. <laughs> and thank you for that, Carlos. Yes. They have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, tax preparer groups. They have uh, generally in your area, there'll be a group of them. They'll meet together. I used to go to a breakfast every Tuesday morning from April 16th on until January 1. And then we stopped the breakfast, obviously, and then April 16th again. And these people come across folks that, I mean, they need help. And so some, I've gotten four loans last year out of one tax preparer uh, group. So don't miss that bet. In fact, I'm gonna give Jennifer the name of those people that I met with every week and she'll hopefully go back in and take over my position. She called me with a loan down here that was from somebody in Fresno and Jennifer and I worked together on these loans and it, it just worked out very, very well. Don't miss tax preparers. Phil, to support what you're saying, when I was in Fresno, um, I did a drip campaign to CPAs. I put it out um, like around October, November, and dripped on them before they got busy. I got more leads from CPAs that I didn't know. We never communicated, but because they knew I was there because it was just ahead of their season and it was top of their mind, they're looking at folks' income and they're seeing the need. So that's a great point. Yes. Yep. Fine. Yep. Find your niches. Work them. So we're running a little bit late, but this is super important. I, I really want my sales support team to come up here. Cynthia, Dan, Sue. Um, I want to explain to you who we are and what we're going to do for you. So because of Scott's great leadership, thank you. Because of Scott's great leadership and his vision, he's very vested in reverse mortgage. He wants to do more reverse mortgage business. Top we love <laughs> Scott has agreed that we need to focus on reverse mortgage. We need to put more focus on reverse mortgage. And so we have a team that's focused on forward. We have a team that's now focused on reverse. What you don't know about me is I used to be a top producer at Wells Fargo until I decided that I wanted to teach others what I did and motivate them. Been in leadership ever since. That was 16 years ago. Um, John, your story about who you helped is I think resonates with everybody because it's that passion, it's what we do, it's who we are, it's why we do it. Has it moved a little bit over the years? You bet it's moved. And that's why we need to drill deep and we need to take a look at our, our pathways because if you're not fishing in the right pond anymore, you're gonna get frustrated and you're gonna go broke. So your sales support team for Reverse is here to help you. Um, everybody knows Dan. Everybody knows he's in Nirmala. You've got 13 years in the business, right? Yeah, that's right. 13 years in the business. Um, ethics committee. He does magnificent training. I don't know anybody better in the training field. So Dan is here to focus on you and to help you build your business and just does a magnificent job. Cynthia, how quickly does she respond to you? Right? <laughs> Immediately, if not sooner. A lot of companies don't have the desk or a Cynthia and they can't have you ever. She's a, she comes from a DE underwriting background. 
loan scenarios. I mean, she's, she's just such a re resourceful person. And if you're not using the desk and if you're not using Cynthia, you're missing out. You need to start. And our newest addition to the team is hiding behind me. Sue Havland. Sue Havlin is our new business advisor for Reverse. Sue Havlin started coaching reverse mortgage individuals and before anybody else in the industry ever thought about it. Since 2005, she's been coaching for 11 years. Sue is uh, an expert on, on networking, on purchase business. She still writes three loans a month herself in her home state on average per month. Sue is geared up with some tools for a pro forma that we've kind of kept in our back pocket that we don't use enough and need to, but this pro forma will enable you to have conversation with Sue and to see what your ROI would be if you made an investment in marketing. What would happen if you added another loan officer? It's a powerful business tool and Sue will help you get there. Do you want to say anything, Sue? Or have I sufficiently embarrassed you? You, you, you actually have. Um, there's only one thing I would correct. You have 17 years in the mortgage industry. I'm actually embarrassed to say I started in the mortgage industry in 1982. She was 12. <laughs> I'm sure she was 12. that number better. So we added up the numbers. And between your sales support team and your ops team, We've got nearly two centuries, nearly two centuries of experience to support you in your individual business. And Scott has made it possible for us to be that for you. So two centuries could either make us old or it could make us wise. Now we choose to believe that we're wise, okay? <laughs> so we are here, Sue will be uh, reaching out to each of you if you need her before she reaches out to you please she's an excellent coach came very highly recommended anybody want to add anything to that the other piece I'll tell you is that we're collaborating very well with the operations team we're all on your side we're all sales really all of us are in sales um, I don't care if you're processing a loan if you're funding the loan I don't care what you're doing, we're getting the job done, okay? So we focus on the front end. Um, Joe focuses more with his team on, on the back end, but we collaborate well to get the job done. So I couldn't be more pleased to be that resource for you. Use us, okay? And we're out of time. Uh-oh. Thanks so much. Uh, very quick break because we're running behind a little bit, and then we'll come back for our top producer roundtable. Thank you, everybody, for your participation.